everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Samantha and today I'm going to be sharing with you our thoughts on the teaching textbooks for math. So stay tuned. So everyone, as you know, we are currently wrapping up our school year. So we are getting ready to wave goodbye to our 2016-2017 school year and let me tell you it has been a ride. Uh, nothing has, <laughs> it's been interesting, let's just say that. Uh, we've had a few bumps in the roads and we've had a few obstacles, but I am happy to say that we are ending on a good note and I am excited to be able to share with you our thoughts on the curriculum that we have used throughout the year. So yesterday I did for you the review of what we thought about the Well-Trained Mind uh, First Language Lessons on the Level 1, and I'm going to put that link up above here, and I never remember where it comes up at, so I'm just going to do this and I'll put that review up there. And so today I'm going to be sharing with you our thoughts on the teaching textbooks for. Now this is, Davis is the one that used this program and Davis is currently wrapping up his grade four. But I do want to say, keep in mind that just because your child is in the third grade, fourth grade, or fifth grade, that's not really how the teaching textbooks works, I've kind of noticed. There is a placement test that your child can take before you purchase the curriculum. And for us, it was pretty spot on. I mean, it hit Davis as being at the fourth grade level, well, with the math four, and it was perfect. It starts out very simple because you are reviewing what you've learned in the past. It starts out with addition and subtraction and borrowing and carrying and things of that nature. And then it goes into multiplication and division. So it, it slowly goes into this process to where they're not overwhelmed. They're not feeling intimidated. It does it slow. The uh, graphics are adorable. The little mouse, the little, I always say mouse, he always kept on the mouse, but there's mouse, penguins, and things like that on the corner of the screen that keep their attention. And there's just something about when you get all your answers right and it goes up and it does this little thing depending on what it is. They love that. It's almost like a, a, a reward because they're seeing this. It offers hint buttons if they get stuck. So you have that option, uh, which is amazing. Let's say they get a problem wrong. It'll show them how to do it. Uh, to get it correct if it's something that they're not understanding. So all in all, we've really been happy with this program. So what exactly did we get with this program? Now we got your, the CD ROM set. Now keep in mind, you can order just the CD ROM set. I chose to order the whole set and I'm glad I did. And I'll tell you why in a little while, but with the four, uh, the CD ROM set, you do get four discs and your lessons are split up uh, among the discs. So we kept, in there if he was working on something generally he kept that particular disc in the computer and it stayed in there until he was done but that and then we also got the uh, math for answer booklet for the teacher there's no bells and whistles it's pretty much black and white straightforward here are your answers because that's basically what you're needing if you are checking it and so um there is that i will say that some of the things i had forgot how to do over the years and I had to go back and watch his lecture. I do wish that, you know, it did have how to do each problem. Um, and then show you the answer, kind of work it out to refresh uh, the old minds here. But it doesn't, and that's okay because we were able to figure it out. But that is your answer book, and then you have your student book. And I'm, so here is it. And so, as I mentioned, why am I glad I got the student book? Well, there were some, some things that, as with any child, Maybe he wasn't getting, he could not grasp the concept of something. And even though he could watch the hint, he could watch the lecture again, he could do all of this, it just wasn't clicking. And that's when we would pull out the handy dandy teaching textbook, old fashioned way, and we would work the problem. Now, the textbook is what's so great about this, is it is set up the same way that the computer program is set up. With the lessons on the computer, you start out with a lecture. This has got the lecture in print. So you can read all of this and it's gonna remind you how to work the problem. So this is like lesson 26. And then once the lecture gets done, you then work your problems. So that is laid out, basically it's laid out the same as how the computer, and you always have your practices as well, and then you have your problems. I'm a firm believer of doing the practices because even if you know it, I feel a little work is not going to hurt you. So, and it keeps it fresh in your mind. But this has came in handy. The only complaint I have about this book is the pages are super duper thin and they're easy to rip. But other than that, we have loved it and we have used this numerous times. There was a, several times 
that we've had to pull it out. And the wonderful thing about the program is if you do have to use your book, that's okay because you can go in and change things on the, the, the grade book on the program so that it makes still keeping your grades easy peasy, no worries. And that is something else I loved about the program is because it was super simple to keep the grades. So now I'm going to show you just a quick look at what the program looks like. Okay, everyone, so I just opened this up, and this is going to be the screen that you see when you first open up your teaching textbooks, and I'm going to first give you a look at the parent part, okay, and let me sign into this really quick. All right, so once I'm on here, it'll ask me what do I want to do. Do I want to go to the grade book, change password, do I want to change or delete a student account or add another student? So I'm going to go into the grade book. Okay, and this is showing the ones that he has done. And you can see all of this here. Um, so we're gonna go back and say for instance, he had like, okay, and what I'm gonna do is, since I'm gonna show you just really quick on how to use this, I'm gonna show you as far as this goes. So like with lesson one, we can see what he's done. He's done the practice, the optional practices. He got those in the first attempt and he did his problems and he got those in the first attempt except for the very last one and it took him two attempts and he ended up with 100. Now, is what we can do is I can go in and I can edit this. I can choose to delete that problem or change the grade. Let's say that he was having a really hard time with a certain lesson on here and so we decided to pull out the student workbook and work it that way pen and pa pencil and paper and just work through it in that sense I can go in and I can change the grade and I can give him a different grade um, as you can see right there it marked it as an X simply because it was already he'd already got it correct so I'm going to change that back and you see that. So that is a good way. We've actually had to utilize that a few times over the year. Um, there may be some things that he got hung up on and he wasn't fully understanding them and he wasn't doing very well on them. So as what we would do is we would get the, the, the book out, we would work through it one-on-one -on -one until we got it figured out. So that was what worked for us. So that came in handy. And so let's say we want to delete it. So we can delete that problem as well. And then he can go back through and work it. And since I'm going to be showing you guys kind of how to do this, I'm going to delete a few of these. And also I want to point out that as I'm deleting these, it is not changing his grade. I am just deleting that as an option. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Parent Home and log in. And I'm going to log in as Davis now. And I'm going to go into lesson one. And these little characters are always a favorite of his. He loves changing his little characters as he goes along. So I'm going to click on practice the lecture first to let you kind of get a feel of how the lecture is going to run. So give it just a second here. It's loading up. Lesson one, addition. You've been studying math for years, and you know that one of the most important things to do in math is add two numbers. Let's do an addition problem. What's 5 plus 3? Just type the answer in the box. That's right. The plus sign stands for addition. You already know that. The plus sign just tells you to add the 5 and the 3. The equal sign shows that 5 plus 3 and 8 are equal to each other. They have the same value. Now that's just to kind of give you an idea of how the lecture goes. And let's go into the practice A. So you can In this problem, you need to add 6 plus 5. Okay, so 6 plus 5 is 11, so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to enter my answer and I'm going to say Excellent. 12. Excellent! So as you can see as well, this little mouse starts moving around and he's actually doing something over here on this side and it tells me I got it right. Do I want to see how to do it again, how to do it? I do not, but if I did want to say, then I would say yes. In this problem, you need to add 6 plus 5, and 6 plus 5 is equal to 11. But in case you forgot, you could remember it like this. 5 plus 5 is equal to 10, and since 6 is 1 more than 5, 
6 plus 5 would have to equal 11. So the answer to practice A is 11. So as you can see, it does a really good job at walking you through how to do it, just in case. So I'm going to click on 1, and on I'm this going one, to do it you're going to tell which numbers are the add-ins, and 2 plus 8 equals 10. Okay, so I'm going to do this incorrectly to kind of give you an idea on what happens when we do miss a problem. So I'm going to say that my add-ins are 10, or well, because it's only one digit, see, so it's not going to let me do that, but I'm going to say 1 and 0, and I'm just going to show you guys how to do that. Nice try, but that's not it. Okay, so I have the option, if I get it incorrect, I can try the problem again, and I've got three chances to correct my answer or I can see the answer. So if I click on see the answer, it'll ask me do I want to see how to do it. So I'm going to say yes. In this problem I we have 2 plus understand. 8 equals 10 and we need to tell which numbers are the add-ins. Remember the add-ins are the numbers that are being added together. So here in 2 plus 8 equals 10 we're adding 2 plus 8. So that means that 2 and 8 are the add-ins which means the answer to practice C is 2 and 8. So this is, um, we really like that because of the way it does go back and shows you all of that. So Here you need to tell which numbers are the add-ins in okay, 9 so plus 6 I'm, equals okay, 15. They've, they've Time out for a hint. They have shown me how to do it, but let's say that it's, it's a harder problem or I just have a hard time doing addition. I can always go up here and you've got your hint. And so this hint is going to show me once again how to do this problem. Here's a hint. Remember, the numbers that are being added are called add-ins. So it's really great at helping to remind them if they are struggling. Uh, once again, I know this is an easy lesson, but they do get progressively harder as you go through. Good job. And as you can see again, the little mouse here, he's climbing on up to the candy cane. Uh. So in the end, it'll say, congratulations, you're done. I can check my grade book, I can exit the problem, or I can go to the next lesson. So I'm just going to kind of show you if I go to the grade book. Um, I'm going to have to go back in, obviously, and change this to that I got wrong to show you guys how it goes. Because his score now went down to 95 and he was at a 100. But that is basically how it works. And you have your quiz and bonuses. Okay, guys, so that was just a quick glance at what the program looks like. And now I'm going to let you hear from Davis. Since Davis is the one that did the program, I felt it only fair that I ask him questions to see how he answered it and to see what he thought about it. So here's Davis. Okay, Davis, since you're the one that used the teaching textbooks, tell everybody what grade you're in. Fifth. No. The, the, the life of a homeschool kid. You are in the fourth grade. Oh. Now, one thing, okay, so you're in the fourth grade and you did teaching textbooks four, right? Mm -hmm. So what did you think about it overall? I like What did you like or not like about it? Um, I'd be honest. Did I didn't like how, how it's actually on the computer. I think it's easier just to look at it written on paper. Yeah, so you're not you're not fond of the computer base, huh. but you like the program overall, just not on the computer, right? Is that what if you're it saying? was on paper, I would like it. Well, what about when we pulled the student book out? Did you like the way the student book looked? Mm -hmm. Do you like the, the all the black and white, or would you change anything about it? Yet? Probably. Uh. <laughs> no, you like the black and white. Cool. I'll turn it yellow. <laughs> You're silly. So, you basically, you liked it. Did you find it hard? Just a little. It started out easy, because yeah. you were reviewing, right? But as you went on, did you think it gave you good direction? It was clear on what you needed to do? Yes. Yeah. It was easy to go back if you forgot something? Was it easy? Did you feel it was easy to go back and look back on things if you forgot how to do something? Because you just go on to that lesson and then click. The, the, well, the problem, at least, and then you can refer to it. Right, so it was easy. So yes. if you covered something in, say, lesson 20, and then it covered it again in lesson 30. I could go back to 20 and look, just in case I forgot. 
did it give you a reference to go back? Or did you have to remember about where it was you covered it? Um, I had to go back one time. And I thought it was like less than 30 or something. But it was like less than 40. I didn't know. But I figured it out. Okay, so all in all a good program? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Alright, so there was Davis and his feedback. Basically, you heard him, and, and I have to agree, he, he liked the program overall. As a parent, I thought it was a very well-rounded program because of the way it has your hints and your lectures, and it helps. Um, but as Davis said, the only thing he didn't like about it was it being on the computer. Some people like to be have computer learning, and some don't, and that's okay. I, for one, prefer... Even now, I don't even read on a tablet or a Kindle. I have to have an actual book in hand. That's just how I operate. I don't do well with online classes. He apparently is not at that point to where he wants online classes or computer classes. And um, as far as doing classes on the computer. Now, he may, as he gets older, he may decide that he wants to do that. And that is fine. But at this point... Being in fourth grade, it's just not something he likes, and that's okay. I'm more than happy to sit down one-on-one, -on -one, which is how we do our lessons anyway. And maybe that's just it. He's used to having mom here teach everything, and that's just what he prefers. So, all in all, we have to say, me and Davis both have to give it a thumbs up, because it is a, a wonderful program. And um, the only con is, for us, the computer work is just not what we're at at this point, and that's okay. So, um, I hope this video was helpful. If you like the video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Um, if you are new to our channel, we would love to keep you around, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. So, thank you for watching, and have a wonderful rest of your day.